Yes! Alright, what's up everybody? Peter Joseph here for video number two on your Triple Threat Friday. Got one more coming later tonight over on the main channel with your SmackDown review for tonight. Should be a good show coming away in just under two hours. So let's see what happens tonight with SmackDown. I believe our Tribal Chief. We must acknowledge our Tribal Chief every day and on Friday nights. That's a, that's, that's a given. Friday night. It's Friday night. We must acknowledge our Tribal Chief, Roman fucking Reigns. 1,000 and... Almost 1,080 days as our Tribal Chief. And it's not going to stop anytime soon. So, after Payback, which is most likely not going to be on Payback. I don't know if there's going to be another celebration, but he will hit 1,100 days as champ. Three plus years as champ. Oh, just an amazing reign. No pun intended. For Roman. And uh, we're already in the fourth inning, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the fourth inning. We got a long way to go before this epic reign, no pun intended again, finally ends. And it's not going to end at WrestleMania 40 with people saying that, oh, Cody's going to win the Elimination Chamber, number one contender spot, and then go to WrestleMania 40 and beat Roman. Not going to happen. Not happening. Not going to happen. Uh, he's not winning the Royal Rumble again. It's probably going to be Walter. Or it's going to be Solo. Or maybe E. Lie. Trick. That's an insult. That's a fact of life. So, whoever wins that, most likely will face whoever is the World Heavyweight Champion. Be it Seth Rollins or Damian Priest or Finn Balor or whoever is, is the champ by then. So, I think Roman is going to, you know, go about his merry way and then... Most likely, I would think, at WrestleMania 40, he either faces Solo, if he wins the Royal Rumble, or, who knows, at this point. But looks like they're going to do Jay and Jimmy, maybe a payback, or they may hold off on it, till I, may, I doubt, uh, Fastlane, maybe as a Survivor Series, maybe a Crown Jewel, which comes up early November, in, in that shithole country of Saudi Arabia. The Crown Jewel 5. And uh, let me we'll see what happens with that. Roman's not advertised for fast lane. He's not advertised for payback. He's not advertised as of now for the Survivor Series. And who knows what's going to happen at Crown Jewel. If the, you know, the Saudi prince with his blood money asks Roman to be there. So, I mean, we'll have to see what happens in the next... Basically, two, a little over two, two and a half months with Roman defending his belt again. Against who? Who knows? Maybe a fatal four-way at Crown Jewel for the belt. But Roman will win that easily. But, I mean, we'll have to see what happens with that. But in any case, um, got a lot of other things going on on SmackDown as we're, you know, counting down till, till payback. We're two weeks away. So, hopefully we'll start getting some matches. I don't even think we have anything announced for Payback as of now. As far as I know, we don't have anything yet. We're about two and a half, three weeks away. So, I would think some matches will finally be announced tonight on SmackDown. Then we got Rampage tonight. See what happens with that. Tomorrow we got Collision. And we'll see what happens with that uh, as, we, uh, as we end the weekend. And the, uh, well, the next, the last weekend... Of August, and you know, we're three weeks away from Labor Day, so the unofficial end of summer is almost at hand, ladies and gentlemen. So, we got that, and we will move on. All right, on this Friday afternoon, late afternoon, getting close to Friday evening, Friday night, over here on the Peter Joseph channel, once again, my name is Peter Joseph, I'm a content creator. If you didn't know that by now, uh, talk about wrestling and anything else I feel like talking about. So, check out my first video on this channel uh, and of the day. Talking about Cash Wheeler, who got arrested uh, today, and then he got arraigned today. Uh, he's out on, on um, $2,500 bond. 
for his uh, road rage incident where he pulled a firearm. But luckily, he didn't. He, he, he was a. You know, if he didn't, you know, post bond, he would have got three years in jail. And that would have been really, really, really bad on AEW and on, you know, they would, it would have ruined FTR at Box 3 at All In. But, you know, the craziness that happens with AEW continues with the punk situation. Now this, I can only imagine what's next. So, Tony Khan, you need to, you know, control your fucking company and control your freaking inmates at the asylum. But, I mean, we'll have to see what happens with, with all that. So, check out the video. Link will be down in the description box where you can subscribe to this channel and my other channels as well. And like the video, this vi like this video and any one of my videos. Uh, subscribe, share the video all over the internet. And don't forget to uh, follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're real, if you're not, suck a dick and get the fuck out of here. And don't forget to tap the bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. So, it is what it is. And that's that. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, on this Friday evening, August the 18th, 2023, once again, thank you for watching. And if you like the content, subscribe. And this is your first time watching, and you like it. Please hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, the dead sick, that thumb up, the you know what. And uh, if you do subscribe, this is your first time, welcome to the party, pal! I hope you enjoy the ride, and if not, you can hop off. We don't take stragglers here. Yeah, that's not pretty much it. Alright, enough about, enough about that bull funky. That's bullshit for you people that don't know what bull funky is. But anyway, on video number two on this Friday evening, it is time for your late and very far out of date. That, that, your late and very far out of date NXT review for August the 15th, 2023. From the Capitol Wrestling Center in Orlando, Florida. Alright. So, NXT had its go-home show this past Tuesday. Uh, next week is is Heat Wave, their summer show. So, we got a lot about that. We're going to get Carmelo Hayes, the man that shoots and he doesn't miss. Uh, seeing who he's going to face at Heat Wave, whether it be Wesley or the big boss man 2.0 himself. That's Dominic Dijak. We got that. Uh, we got... La Familia, Tony D, and Stax defending the belts against the Schism. And, uh, well, not the Schism, well, Dyad, you know, the grizzled young veterans. Man, we get all that. And we'll see, we got plenty of other things happening on the show. As, like I said, we're, one, we're a week away, under a week away now from this video. From NXT Heat Wave 2023. So let's get into this 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 uh this episode, and let's not waste any time because we gotta get ready for SmackDown and Rampage too. And uh, also uh, preseason football tonight. Uh, if you're a Giant fan, you got uh, the Giants play in just about 45 minutes at home at that crappy stadium called MetLife Stadium, taking on the Carolina Panthers, who lost big time to the the New York Jets. J -E -G -S -J 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 -S they lost 20 to nothing. Uh, I think the Jets play tonight or tomorrow. Um, they face Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers. I think in Tampa, of course, because they're not going to be playing. Well, maybe. I don't know. But anyway, uh, for my team, the 49ers, we're at home tomorrow against Denver. We'll see how that goes. Because after last week's debacle, 34 to 7 against the Raiders. Uh, but preseason doesn't count, right? Mm -hmm. Nick Bosa's holding out. He's losing a lot of money, but you know he'll get his money. Trust me. Nick Bosa ain't going anywhere. The greatest fucking linebacker of the modern era. He ain't going anywhere. Bosa ain't leaving the Niners. He's going to get his money that he rightfully deserves. Four or five years. 80, 80 to 100 and, 100 and somewhat million. Because he's, you know, he's that good. So, 
So hopefully, you know, you know, the Niners management and, you know, Bosa and his agent can come to a deal, hopefully before the season starts and not have it dragged through the season. And they come to a big, humongous, huge deal and Bosa is set for life. Same thing with Kittle, because I think his contract is coming up soon. Uh, Debo, or Debo signed, I think he's got another year or two left on his new contract. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, probably, well, we'll have to see with him, because I think this is his last year as a Niner on his current contract. Um, and then we'll see what happens with Trey Lance and, uh, well, Sam Doyle. Go! But we'll see what happens with that. I think Trey Lance is going bye-bye. We don't need him. But then again, you know, we got Brock Purdy coming back, and he's looking great. The last three days in practice, he looks so good. It's like he never got hurt. But, you know, we gotta, we gotta, you know, you know, see how he does in his first actual full season as a Niners quarterback. You know, and we'll see what happens. You know, he went 12-1 and last year. And a faithful, horrible game by those dirty birds. We play in week 13 in Philly. Oh, you're going to get destroyed, trust me. Philly fans, you don't got the, your best fucking defensive end. Because we have him now. You might still have Jalen Hurts. Oh, he's going to get hurt this season, I'll tell you that much. Fuck that guy. And fuck, the, fuck Philly. Fuck their fans. Man, that's pretty much it. Fuck Philly. Fuck the Phillies. Fuck the Flyers. Fuck the 76ers. Just fuck everybody in Philly. I know my cousin lives there, but, you know, minus that. But, in any case, yeah. Fuck the Philadelphia f sports franchises, because they all suck. And they're, they're not going anywhere this year. That's what happened last year, right? Eagles fans? <laughs> Bunch of idiots that you are. Your stupid fan base. But I digress. Anyway, moving on from that. Alright, let's get to NXT. Alright, so... NXT, like I said, it was a pretty decent show last week. Uh, this week, I should say. And it comes your way from the Capitol Wrestling Center in Orlando, Florida. And as always, our commentary team of the man with a creepy jacket, Vic Joseph. And the man who smokes more weed and more bowls than Dia Hale, Wesley, and Tyler Bate. Combined, and that's the legendary Hall of Famer, two-time Hall of Famer, two-time, two-time Hall of Famer. That's Booker T. Sucker. All right, and we'll see what happens with that. Also on the show, we saw Mommy Rhea Ripley and her boy toy, Dominic Guerrero. Is it Dom Dom? That's all I gotta say about that. We'll move on. All right, so we start off NXT. With the Tag Team Champions, we had the Dia the Grizzled Young Veterans, Fowler and Reed, taking on the champs, La Familia. My, you know, with, with man himself, Stax, and my cousin, hey, cousin, get in here, cousin, my cousin, hey, how you doing, my cousin, Paisan. My cousin, ladies and gentlemen, Tony D'Angelo will get you a pizza for two dollars. Two dollars. That's how good he is to me. To me. So we La Familia. Tony D'Angelo and Stax taking on the Grizzled Young Veterans uh, with Schism and their recruits at ringside along with Joe Gacy and the lovely Ava Rain. So, Macusel was a decent match. And starts off with Stax knocking Jagger Reed into the corner. Then we go outside. Schism start, uh, stares at Stax into, stop, into stopping what he was doing. Go back in. Tony D'Angelo comes in, gets sent into a spin wheel kick from Mr. Jagger Reed. Uh, but Tony comes back with a suplex, knocking him down. And then gets the tag to Stax, grabs a basic headlock. And then we get a little rest period for a little bit. And then the champs knock the dyad to the floor. And then we get Big Flippy Dibbity News taking on the Grizzled Young Veterans. And then. Tony D and Stax go, go back in the ring. They're celebrating. Hey, Bison! That's how Italians do it. We don't fuck around. Anyway. So, we go we go back inside. And then, uh, Fowler throws 
Uh, his partner at stacks, knocking him down like a bowling pin, off the apron and into the announcer's table. Ow! Did I hit Vic Joseph? Damn! Damn! It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. One of them is gonna get seriously hurt, and then, you know, Hunter, Steph, hi, Steph, you know, Nick Khan! Man, you know, Give me a call. Hit me up on Twitter, man. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'll fly down to whatever shithole. I mean, well, not the shithole, but I'll, I'll fly down to Florida. I'll fly down to Orlando. I'll take Vic Joseph's job any day of the fucking week, dude. I'll sit next to Booker T and have him, you know, boy me half to death. Black Snow! <laughs> but it'd be nice to sit next to Booker T, you know. We'll talk about Black Snow and Chet Lemon. You know, back in the T TNA days, you know, show off his uh, freaking, you know, two, two Hall of Fame rings, and, you know, well, have fun! Like, Booker, what the fuck you talking about, dude? Tell me things about, about I'm like, what? what? <laughs> I'm just calling the action, leave me alone! Shucky, ducky, quack, quack. We're coming for you, you know. Well, I can't say that word, but it's, it rhymes with, well, I'm not going to say what it rhymes with, but anyway, we move on. All right, we go to break, we come back, Stacks fights out of a basic 1902 chin lock, uh, but can't get back on the offense, and then the Dyad double team him, uh, they double team him, and they try to drag in Tony D'Angelo, my cousin, which, you know. It, he does come in behind the referee's back. The referee doesn't see that Stax rolls up Jagger Reed with a fruit roll up, but Tony D, you'll fuck that up. No, no, nothing wrong with that. No. Anyway, Stax manages to kick uh, Reed away, gets the hot tag to my cousin Tony D'Angelo, comes in like a great fighting Italian, like, hey, Rocky Balboa, hey, kid! Cleans house, and then all four men in the ring, everything's breaking down, and then Ivy Nile comes out, but she still has some problems with uh, the lovely Ava Rain. But then uh, the rest of the schism come, uh, well, they come around and kind of like corner her, like ten people come out, well, come come from oh, around the ring, and like they're stopping her from going forward and everything. And then while that's happening, there's two other people that did not go go to ringside to, uh, you know, to help out. And both of those guys jumped the dyad, the Grizzled Young Veterans. I guess, uh, wonder who they can be. Hmm, the Creed Brothers, maybe? Uh, yeah. Pretty much. I mean, you can see it, because they, they, when they, they closed in on them, they zoomed in on their faces. You, it's, it's freaking Brutus and Julius, the Creed Brothers. Obviously, it's been, been freaking facts for three weeks now. Even, even when they did that promo, you know, behind a, a green screen when they were in, like, like, Egypt or something like that, drinking freaking margaritas or whatever the fuck they were drinking. Juice. Hawaiian punch. I don't know. Maybe. Pepsi. But. In any case, they beat him up on the floor, throw him back in. Tony hits a belly-to-back slam on Fowler. One, two, three. La Familia. They get the win, retain the tag team titles in just under 13 and a half minutes. Makes me really happy. And I think every Italian in in, in America and in, in Italy, and maybe around the world, because there are a lot of Italian Americans, they're Italian, you, you know, there are Italians in Canada. In Puerto Rico too. But it is uh, what it is, and that's uh, pretty much it. Alright, so the La Familia, the Italian family, get the win, retain the tag team titles. Match was decent, gave it three out of five stars. Uh, but, you know, seriously, I think the schism needs to end. I'm sorry, you know. I think Fowler, I think, you know, the Dyad, Fowler, the Grizzled Young Veterans really need to get out of, out of WWE. Because every time they get a tag team title shot, <clears throat> they lose in some horrible way. Or they actually put on a good match and still lose. And they've asked for the release. And WWE's like, nope, we're keeping you. Sorry. It's 
So it's like, it's, what's the point? Why are they there? Just a job? And now they're probably going to have another match with the Creed Brothers. Whenever that happens. Maybe at uh, NXT's next pay-per-view, No Mercy, at the end of the month. End of September, I should say. September the 30th in Bakersfield, California. Have to see what happens with that. Maybe there'll be a stipulation where if the Creed Brothers lose, they can never return to NXT. I, I don't know. Some weird stipulation that if the Creed Brothers win, they're back in NXT. And if they lose, they're done. They can never be... They, they're basically banned from NXT. I guess. I don't know. But we'll see what happens with that. And we'll move on. With, um... With that. Oops, give me a second. Come on now. There we go. Alright, moving on. I had to fix the mic. But we move on. Alright, after that, and most of this I already talked about on um, my Raw review, so I did a little bit of a watch-in, so you can see some of that. And I talked a little bit about that. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. And we move on with that. Uh, actually, give me one second, guys. I have to, oh, okay. Uh, I have to check something, check something, so give me a second. Uh, I know I'm doing this, you know, on the fly when I'm doing live, but. Okay, in any case, uh, I wanted to add a look up something. Uh, I'll do it later. I'll do it in post-production. I'm sorry. So I thought I already did an NXT review, and I forget something my mind's not with me right now, so I apologize. But anyway, our next segment, we go to Eddie Thorpe, still looking for his fighting spirit. You know, showing him, you know, turning into a wolf and stuff like that, finding his animality, as I called it. All we needed some guy dressed up as Night Wolf from Mortal Kombat. Find your animality. So maybe, uh, you know, Eddie Dorp's going to turn into a wolf. What did... I, I, know, I remember Mortal Kombat Annihilation, that horrible movie that it was. When Liu Kang turned into a dragon, obviously. And, uh, you know, the first appearance of Reptile. And a few other people, Shao Kahn. You weak, pathetic fool! Uh... But, I don't remember, I think Nightwolf showed this animality, and I forget what it was on them. I think it was a wolf, too. I forget. It's been a while since I watched that horrific movie. Not as horrible as I, Dragon Ball! You know, Dragon Ball Z, the movie? Horrible! I mean, no Vegeta? I mean, serious, like, seriously? No Vegeta? Come on. I'm the prince of all sayings and I'm not even in the movie! I wanted to kill Kakarot with Sprinkles Kakarot! You know? I wanted to hit it with Gallic Gun! You know? Did we get fucking Vegeta or even Raditz? You know? All we got is fucking Piccolo. Goku, look, the actor played Goku was horrible. We got Bulma. In the movie, I think we had Krillin. I think we had Master Yoshi. Master Yoshi. Master Roshi. That, that movie was horrible, man. I, I hope it never gets... I mean, if it gets redone, do it the right way. I mean, I like the anime movies. That's freaking epic. I mean, with all the you know, all the movies they had. You know, the Broly... The last one. Well, the Broly movie. Uh, the superhero movies. Stuff like that. When they introduced Hearts and... Uh, uh, foo, not, not boo, not Majin Boo, you know, I kill you, don't you do chocolate, you know? we'll eat you up, you know, stuff like that, but not boo, foo, not Wu-Tang, you know, but foo, that series was pretty damn good, and then they had, I think they had a movie based off that, but then they had another series where like, go on, goes Super Saiyan 3, well, I, yeah, I think he goes Super Saiyan 3. I don't think he can't even hit Super Saiyan 4. That's how bad Gohan is. 
And then I think they had, uh, well, Piccolo go to his ultimate level or something like that. Some shit like that. Not much of Vegeta. I mean, really, what are you gonna do? What else can you do with Vegeta? He's gone Super Saiyan 3, which we fi saw in a movie, finally. He's gone Super Saiyan 4. He's gone Super Saiyan Blue. Super Saiyan God! Super Saiyan Ultra God! Did that before Goku did. But Goku's now Grand Master... I don't know what the fuck he is now. He's ma he's like Master Ult Ultra Instinct. Grand Master Ultra Instinct now. I have no idea. Goku thinks he's better than Vegeta. He's not. We all know that. He thinks he is, but Vegeta... How many times has Vegeta killed Goku? How many times has Vegeta died, really? Two, maybe three times in the whole series. He died during the Freezer series. Died during the Boo series. And technically died during the, uh... The GT series. That's very three. I think he's died three or four times. I think. I have to look back at the movies. I think maybe he died in one of them, too. So, I, I would say three, four, maybe five times officially that Vegeta has died in the movies. But always, always comes back and kicks ass. How many times has Goku died? A lot. More times than almost... More times than Krillin. And Krillin sucks. Krillin sucks. Tien sucks. Freaking Yamcha sucks. Even, even, uh... Basically everybody else, they suck. Trunks, you suck. I hate my son. I know. It is what it is. The only people I am actually liking the like, whole Dragon Ball series is Boo, Majin Boo. Majin Boo. I'm not talking about uh, Evil Boo, the second carnation, or Kid Boo. I like Majin Boo. Not Oob. Oob sucked. That was just retarded. But I always, I always will and always will love Vegeta. And I love Majin Boo. Because they kick ass. The only, and the only other good thing I like about it is, you know, the, the fusion saga where Goku and Vegeta, you know, Vegeta had a, you know, unwillingly fused with, uh, with, uh, with Goku to make Gogeta, then he made probably one of the best fusions, Vegeto. Not Vegito, it's Vegeto. <laughs> that too. Uh, <laughs> um, and other than that, may maybe, uh, Gotenks. That's pretty much it. I love Dragon Ball Z. I, I, I mean, I do like the original Dragon Dragon Ball. And I do like Dragon Ball Z. Dragon, Dragon Ball Z is my favorite. I hate GT with a passion. Even though we see Vegeta go Super Saiyan 4, which is epic. But I hated the whole entire series. You know, then they made uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, super, uh, super Heroes, and then... You know, everything else, where we saw, you know, Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Blue, Master Ultra Instinct, stuff like that. But not now, I mean, what else can you do with the Dragon Ball world? Not much. I mean, they're going to go Super Saiyan 5? No, they're not going to go Super Saiyan 5. That's like altered universe shit that we see on YouTube or in fan fictions and shit. But I think the last thing we saw was like, uh, go on, go Super Saiyan 3. I, Super Saiyan 3 or 4. But it took you long enough, right? It took you like 20 years to finally get, figure out Super Saiyan 4 to go on. You fucking idiot. Same thing for you, Trunks. Fuck you guys, man. It's always about Vegeta. It's always about Vegeta. Alright, let me move on. Alright, so enough about the animality. So, Eddie Thorpe looking for his fighting spirit. He's all ready to fight. And looks like he, you know, he still has a death wish on him, you know, with Dominic Dijak. So, we will have to see what happens with him as we, uh, we move on. That's that. Alright, so, I gave the first match three out of five stars. I gave Eddie Thorpe's little, little video as well, three out, three out of five stars. Alright, after that, <clears throat> excuse me, we go to uh, Carmelo Hayes, our NXT World Heavyweight Champion, signing some autographs, I guess for the fans or for something. 
some something, you know, signing, and then we have a whole bunch of security guards in the back for some odd reason. Uh, and then Wesley comes in, still pissed, and Carmelo's like, "I don't have time for you. Get out of my fucking face." Yeah, don't call me the N word again. Like you almost slipped last week. If you kept, if you caught that, you know, Wesley's like, "You little." Mm. If it wasn't for Dijek coming in, he would have said that N-word live on TV. Even though, like, I think uh, Mc Vince McMahon said it. Remember when he said that to Cena? What up, Bob? We should have said, What up, G? Back when Vince McMahon, went, when, he, when he had a do-rag on, thinking, you know, he had to, he's like, let me, let me whip it right out. You know, he had the ECW title, which was the worst moment in ECW history. But he was funny as do rag Vince. <laughs> You're fired. Yeah. Vince is still a 78 year old senile bastard. But, you know, you always gotta remember the good days with Vince. You know, when in the 80s, Vin 80s Vince was cool. 90s Vince, well, bef be you know, during the. the, the uh, the new generation days, he was pretty then he was good. Then Mr. McMahon, you know, that fucking epic. I mean, during the attitude era and the ruthless aggression era. Then it became senile Vince, you know, from the PG era up to now. But, you know, we always you know, as much as we all hate Vince, you know, for some of the shit he does, you always gotta remember the good times with Vince McMahon. You know? You know, he's like 77, 78 years old now. Don't, might not have much time left for Vince, so. And when he passes, it's going to be a, a really sad day in the world of professional wrestling. Because without Vince McMahon, there is no wrestling. There's really no WWE without Vince McMahon and Hulk Hogan, brother. And now it's going to be run by Hunter, Nick, God, man, and Steph. Hi, Steph. You know. So we'll see what happens in the next... I would say maybe 10, 15 years if Vince lives that long, but we'll see. I'm not saying anything bad about Vince. I don't want him to die, so don't go there. I'm not wishing death on Vince McMahon, even though I, you know, I've said it before. He should die, but not, not right now. But, you know, he's got a long way to go, that genetic jackhammer, you know. So we'll see what happens with that. Excuse me. All right, so Wesley comes in and tells Carmelo, uh, well, Carmelo says, I, I'm really busy right now. I have no time for you. So Wesley's like, all right, I'm going to go out there, win the number one contendership, and I'm going to beat Dijak, and I'm going to come right back here with that contract, and you're going to sign the contract to defend that belt against me at Heat Wave. So Carmelo's like, well, why don't you go do that? Get the fuck out of here. There you go. Alright, so I give that three out of five stars. And we move on. Then we go into the locker room where we have Chase. You! Andre Chase, Mr. Chase, Andre Chase, and his prized pupil, Duke Hudson, with a stupid trophy still. Participation trophy. Uh, so Andre, they talk about trying to get Thea Hale back on the right track. Because, you know, she's still pissed about Mr. Chase throwing in the towel at the Great American Bash. So, so Duke's like, well, how are you going to do that, Mr. Chase? Well, and then Mr. Chase said, well, I got a match with J.C. Jane. Of all people, J.C. Jane. Nothing bad to say about her. I mean, you, I mean, Dia Hell, you're trying to get her back on the right track and facing, a, um, you know, a beautiful woman like J.C. Jane who's going to kick her ass. So just work through her, her emotions. Come on now. So Dia comes in. She's still pissed off. And accuses Mr. Chase of always trying to do what's best for her. And Duke's like, yeah, uh, yeah, she's got it right there, Mr. Chase. And Thea tells, you know, Mr. Chase, try not to throw the towel in again. Oh, boy. So then she leaves. And then Mr. Chase asks Duke, what the fuck was that about? So Hudson's like, uh, I'm going to go talk to her. So we'll see what happens with with um, all that. I still think Dia Hale should turn should freaking leave leave Chase U like like she'll she'll like go up like it's like I'm I'm leaving 
You know, I'm dropping out. Then she goes on her own. Goes nowhere, really. Maybe to the catering line, but... Eh, we'll just to see what happens with Thea Hale and the rest of the cheese. You! That's we well on. And that's it. Alright, so I gave that two and a half out of five stars. And we move on. Alright, then we go back inside the Capitol Wrestling Center. I think I... Whatever. Alright, you know what? I'm going to stop this. I think I did my NXT review already. But... We'll see. Uh... But anyway, all right, never mind. I was going to stop the video, but I'm not. So, if I do this again, then, you know, it's there. But in any case, we go to our next match. Blair Davenport taking on Dana fucking Brooke. Uh, Lee. I just want to, I want to check something out before I get, I, I uh, continue on. Let me just check something. I gotta check something on um, NXT for a second. Uh... Okay, didn't do it. Okay. Alright, so I had to check if I actually did my NXT review. Because you know how... Yeah, yeah, I'm old. I'm sorry. Sometimes I forget things. And I'm entitled to do that. Because I'm old. Alright, so... So, this is your official review for NXT. Alright, so... Minus that situation. Let's get to... Let's get back to seriousness. All right. So after uh, ch the chase, you say we go to our next match. Blair Davenport taking on Dana Fucking Brooke, who's trying to find her, you know, her killer instinct. You know, same thing with her protege, Kevani Jordan. So anyway, this match sucked. Big fat hairy monkey cock, and I didn't give two shits. Uh, you know, Dana did what she did. You know, fought back a little bit, but in the end, uh, to go to the outside and come back in, and uh, they uh, Dana tries for a fruit roll up, and couldn't get it, so Blair knees her right in the face, not once but twice, and gets the pin one, two, three, and under four, just under four minutes, and that's pretty much it. Blair Davenport is your winner. And the match, I gave 2.25 out of 5 stars. Ah, uh, that's it. After the match, Kaylani comes in, puts her arm around Dana Brooks. Like, it's okay, it's okay, you lost, but it's okay. And then Dana's like, this bitch just put her hand on me? Uh-oh. We got trouble in paradise. And I'm not talking about golfing, Kingston! But there might it looks to be trouble in the Dana Brooke Kaylani Jordan camp. And I think Dana is going to either show Kaylani some tough love or really turn on her and turn heel. But who fucking cares about Dana fucking Brooke? Except for my good buddy Jekyll Knight. Just saying. Just saying Dana Brooke should get released. She's just there. Just there to bake those cookies in Titus Catering. And that's uh, pretty much it. We move on. Alright, after that, we see Dominic Dijak, Mr. Big Boss Man 2.0, come up to Carmelo. Uh, and, you know, he's still signing autographs. Tells him to save one for himself for after Heat Wave. And then Carmelo tells him to get to Heat... Well, you have to get to Heat Wave to face me. You know, before talking all that shit. So, we'll see what happens with that. So, I give that three out of five stars. And then we move on. All right. After that, we go to, well, his his good buddy. And, well, former good buddy. Well, I guess he's still his good buddy, but now he's going solo. Not solo, we bookie, you know. He's on his own right now. That is the man, Trick Williams. As he takes on Drew Gulak, who comes out with Damon Kemp and Mr. Regal's son, Charlie Dempsey. Alright, so this match was meh. So it's over Trick showing off a a basic grappling attempt. Hits a pop-up right hand. Boom, right in the face. Knocking Gulak to the outside. They go back in. Gulak takes him down by the leg. But Trick knocks him back down. Uh, then he hits the ever popular rock bottom! Rock bottom! Back! God, rock bottom! Rock bottom, King! Back on! Slob knocker! Okay. So, settle down, JR. 
anyway, so he hits the rock bottom before he goes after Damon Kemp and Charlie Dempsey for no apparent reason. And then Brooke, uh, Jensen and uh, Briggs and Jensen, you know, the, the, the two drunk guys, you know, the party boys, you know, with Fallon, don't call me to the Don Henley, where she didn't come out. Anyway, they come out and take care of uh, Damon Kemp and Charlie Dempsey. I guess we're going to see a tag team match this Tuesday night, most likely. Uh, they, they run him off, which leads Trick to hit a spinning kick to face. One, two, three, Trick Williams is your winner in just under four minutes. So, that was pretty much it. As he is ready for basically his death wish next week, uh, this coming week at Heat Wave against the Russian Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. We'll see how, if he can withstand that beating he's going to get this, this coming week. Oh boy. I feel bad for you, Trick. I really do. Good luck, dude. Was uh, Dragon always going to fuck you up? Just saying. All right, move on. All right, then we get a video. I don't know why we got this video, but Dabo Kato. Remember him, Mr. Commando Aziz? <clears throat> He's coming back. And nobody, and I mean nobody, gives a flying fuck. And that's it. Speaking of people that I don't give a flying fuck about, we get to our next segment. That's Baron Storbin. Fuck you, Corbin. Comes out for a little chitty chat. And actually, I like this segment. This is probably the best part of NXT. He cuts a hellacious fucking shoot promo on the NXT roster. Oh, this was great. Loved it. I'm like, hey, finally, I like something about Baron Corbin for once. Besides his, you know, broke-ass Corbin gimmick, and do you have a popular Lone Wolf gimmick that he should go back to? Anyway, so, comes out, says, whatever he, I says, I can say whatever I want, I don't have to worry about the repercussions. Or, uh, you might have to talk to Sean, you know, the heartbreak kid, Sean Michaels, about that. But he, he, he don't put up with that shit. you will probably fine and suspend you kick you out of NXT, you have to go back to the main roster and sit in catering all day again. Sucks to be you, huh? But anyway, so Corby says, I ran Gable Stevenson, you know, like, fake Kurt Angle, out of NXT. Um, he says that the locker room was full of, full of a bunch of soft bitches. Ooh. Damn. Really? really boom! Right to the nuts. Really give, putting the NXT roster on notice. So, so Corbin says, I'm introducing a new era around here. Is it going to be the, is it going to be better than this shit era that we're in right now? Uh, anyway. Uh, so a new era is coming, but then Vaughn, Wagner, and Robbie E, da -da -da -da, you know, Mr. Stone, they come out to interrupt. So Robbie doesn't like what Corbin's saying. And, um, Corbin starts mocking Robbie E's fit. Because he didn't get it at the men's warehouse. But when you do go to the men's warehouse, I haven't said this in a while. But when you do go to the men's warehouse, which is, as always, our sponsor, sponsor, like, Pepsi. But when you go to the men's warehouse, you want to look good for your lady. You want to look good for your guy. You know? Whatever, well, if you go that way. I don't go that way. But if you want to look good for your lady, you want to impress her, you want to get some, you want to get your dick sucked and all that, all this shit, besides taking your blue chew. Uh, but you want to look good when you, you know, take her out, and then, you know, who knows what happens later. But you want to look good, go to the men's warehouse. Get a nice suit, get a nice pair of pants, some shoes, good wardrobe. Because when you do go to the men's warehouse, ladies and gentlemen, tell them Peter Gilmore sent you, because you're going to like the way you look. I can guarantee it. That's why I get all my clothes. Most of the time. But other than that, I get my clothes, you know, the old fashioned way, you know. Buy buying from merchandise stores or I get them at clothing stores. I don't get them at Goodwill. You know, for those people that think I go to Goodwill to get clothes like this, no. No. This is authentic by the way. This is something you never see. This is a night you know, Ranger shirt, 1928. It was a little bit old, you know, because I got old Models back when Models was around. Now, if you want, you want to get your uh, football stuff, you can go to Dick's Sporting Goods. Or go. To, I don't know if it's still around the Sports Authority. I don't even know if that's around anymore. Or you just 
get it on Amazon, you get it off uh, team stores uh, online. Or in, you know, you go to the Mets team store in New York City, you go to, or at City Field, or you go to the Yankees team store. Buy that crap. Fuck the Yankees, by the way. How did the Yankees lose to the... They didn't lose. They got swept by Atlanta. So for once, KD, thank you very much. Thank you, KD. Because your team sw swept the fucking Yankees. Uh -huh. Yanks are fur further going down that hole. They're, 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 they're getting close to being done. And then they lost, I think... Yeah, they lost. They lost I, didn't think, I don't think they played last night, but... I mean, who fucking cares about the Yanks? Really? Both New York teams are basically done this year. Both teams. So, it's just, you know, we're about five, uh, two, three, four, about six weeks away until the Mets and Yankees are playing golf again on the golf course. Tea time at 10 a.m. So get ready, six, six, a little over six weeks away from tea time at the golf course for the Mets and Yankees. And that's pretty much it. Then we'll talk about this great team, the New York Rangers! A couple weeks away from preseason hockey. A uh, little, uh, little over a, mo a month and a half away from actual the regular season. I have to get the schedule because I don't have it right now. So, hockey's coming back. Freaking basketball starts October the 24th. With that, I, I, with the way the way the beginning is gonna start with this weird in in uh, what is it uh, the in season tournament with different groups and then the winner gets a little fuck weird looking trophy. That's stupid. Just like why do we why do why do they have that? And then you have to wait another five six months for the NBA finals when you get the actual real trophy for the NBA. Not some stupid trinket you get during the season. The fuck is that about? Who cares? I mean, who who gives a shit if the Knicks won that shit? Or the Celtics won that shit? Who fucking cares? It's an in-season thing. Not doesn't count. It's a, like a little asterisk. Nobody fucking ca would care about that. I wouldn't care. I don't even watch the NBA that much anymore. But why would you do a tournament in season? Why? Can't we just go by, you know, regular things and just go through the whole season, the whole 82-game season, then the playoffs, then you get the NBA Finals, you get the great trophy that it is? No, but we have to have extra rounds like we have in baseball with the wild card round. Then we have another wild card round. Then we finally have the ALC ALCS, uh, ALDS, and then the ALCS, the NLCS. Then we get to this freaking, uh, by the time, like, the end of October, early November, we get the freaking World Series. Same thing now with football. Now we got, like, seven teams. We got, like, Wild Card Week 1, Wild Card Week 2, Division Series. Then the, the, uh, the champ, uh, the, no, the, the uh, Division Series. We got Wild Card Week 1, Week 2. Then we have, uh, the Division Series. Then we have the Championship Series and the Super Bowl. Retarded. I think this. Uh, they, they did the same thing in hockey when, during the pandemic. We had all those weird freaking things. Not like I mean, back in the day, we had like like the Patrick's the, the Patrick Division Finals. You know, the winner goes to the Stanley Cup. Not I mean, back in the day, hockey was good. All this the the, the playoffs were great back in the day because you didn't have all this all this shit. But now you have so many fucking wild card tournament, wild card playing tournaments and shit. What is this? Is this basic? No. Now why would you use something so primitive as that? If you if you follow anime, you get that reference for Golden Boy. But it is what it is. But yeah, I mean, just weird. But anyway, we move on. All right, I went on a little tangent. I apologize. All right, so Von Wanda comes in. Uh, Corbin box Robbie E's fit, uh, choice, uh, well, fit. Uh, then we hear about Vaughn putting Braun Breaker through a table last week. And Vaughn really doesn't say much. So Corbin's like, well, he's like, 
Oh, what, are you going to stand there and say nothing? He's like, is, is he going to be your mouthpiece? What, you can't stand up for yourself there, Vaughn? So Vaughn's just like, give me the fucking mic. And he's like, I'm tired. Oh, yeah, Corbin says, I was like, oh, you're going to, you're going to learn to do this, or you're going to have to have a wear, you have to wear a security shirt every week. Damn. Every, where, every town you go, blah, blah, blah. So Wagner finally stands up for himself, says, I'm tired, I'm tired of you, and tells him to come out here next week with one of your ten gimmicks, and we're going to have a fight, and I got a reservation for a table for one, and I'm going to put you through one, uh, who he's got, he says, uh, well, he promises he's going to put him through a table, but he's like, not tonight, and that's pretty much it. So it looks like next week at Heat Wave, we got Baron Snorbin Corbin against Von Wagner in a battle of big beefy men slapping meat in that match. And we'll see what happens with that. We move on. Alright, so I gave that 7 3.25 out of 5 stars. And we move on. Alright, then we go to a segment with Mommy Rhea Ripley and her boy toy, Dominic Garnero. That's it. my son. I know, Eddie. I know. He's a great man. He's doing great things. But he can't have Mommy. You know, because mommy is now off the market. What a success, I know, I know. Buddy Murphy got to her first. What do you want me to do? See, if Dom would have played his cards right, he would have got, you know, he would have had, you know, he would have had that, you know, nice piece of ace. But she still has her Latino heat, I say. You know, you have China. You know, by the way, how is Joni? Oh, oh, she's doing great, I say. We had fun last night. We had salsa. We went to salsa dancing, and we had tacos and bonitos, I say. Oh, I know. Good, you know. Just treat her like a queen that she is. Just don't do anything stupid, Eddie. Oh, I won't. I won't. I won't take pillow. Okay. Just say. Just say. <laughs> but anyway, Rhea Ripley and her boy toy Dom, they call it Dragon Lee and Lyra Valkyria for a mixed tag team match next week, which then gets accepted by Dragon Lee and the lassie from, from, the lassie from the, from Ireland, Lyra Valkyria. In a weird segment, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Alright, so I get, we get that. Uh, then we go to a weird segment where Mustafa Ali addresses Supposedly, he dresses a bunch of people like he's the president of the United fucking States. But we know better, we, and there's nobody there. So he's preaching to, preaching to people about North America, or the people of North America. Talk about how the recent and current champion do not represent them. Meaning Wesley, I guess, and now Dom Dom. So he says, Dom is a convicted criminal. And the people deserve better. But... Mustafa Ali, Dom served hard time, and he survived. Prison changes a man. Have you been in prison there, Mustafa Ali? Mm -hmm. So anyway, he says, I'm going to become the North American champion that you need, and in Ali, you can trust. This sound like a really bad freaking political statement. Holy shit. Vote for Ali for President of the United States in 2024. No. But you know who beat him? Donald Trump. Ron DeSantis. 2024. It's going to be huge. I'm going to serve the, I'm going to serve the, the United States in prison. It's going to be huge. It is what it is. So, um, that's that. So, Let's we'll see what happens with Dom Dom and Mustafa Ali for the North American Championship. I hope I really don't want Dom to lose to him. For all people, him. But we'll have to see what happens with that. Alright, so I gave that three out of five stars. Alright, then we go to your the number one contenders match for the NXT world title. Uh, between Dominic Dijak and Wesley. A uh, pretty decent match. Nothing great. Uh, you know. Wesley using his speed against Dijak's power. Uh, Dijak worked on the arm, sends Wesley into the ring post. Ow! And Vicks called the match to cut up 
Booker's rambling. He's rambling about... I don't know what the fuck he's rambling about. Blah, blah, blah. Black Snow. Check them in. You know. <laughs> Probably was doing something like that. But anyway, uh, we continue with the match. Uh, uh, Dijak's knee gets all fucked up during the match. As uh, he tries to feast your eyes. It's all loaded up. Dijak's knee gives out. Uh-oh. But he's fine enough to hit for high justice. That I think that's like choke slam maneuver, whatever it is. Goes for the cover, gets two. And then Dijak sends Wesley to the outside over the barricade. And then Eddie Thorpe comes out to distract Dijak, which allows Wesley to knock Dijak down on the outside. Throws him back in the ring. He sets up for the cardiac kick. He hits that. I thought it was over just from that. But he goes up top, hits spiral tap. Oh. I think a, a certain guy named AJ Styles might have a word with you there, Wesley, even though you do pretty damn good. <coughs> Maybe as an homage to the phenomenal one. But it is what it is. So, after the cardiac kick and spiral tap, one, two, three, Wesley is your winner, and he is the new. Number one contender to the NXT World Title. So next, this coming Tuesday night on the program, Wesley and Carmelo Hayes for the NXT World Title. And it is going to be a banger of a match. And we'll see what happens with that. I think, I would assume that Carmelo is going to win. I mean, I just can't see Wesley as a world champion. I can't. Exhibition champion, former exhibition champion, former, I believe, tag team champion with, uh, well, he was a former tag team champion in TNA, I think. Uh, also with uh, that guy named, you know, Nash Carter. Was, uh, not, uh, what's his name? Uh, God, uh, uh, I can't think of his goddamn name. Um, Zachary Wentz. So, North American champion. He's done pretty good for the mid-card. But, you know, will he become a world champion? Probably not. Probably not. It's going to be a great match this Tuesday night. And we'll see what happens with that. This match was pretty damn good. And I gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars. And we move on. Alright. After that, we have Lyra Valkyria and Dragon Lee. Ready for Mommy Rhea Ripley and Dominic Garnetto essay next week. So we kind of have a weird little segment between them. Uh, you know, Lyra's like, oh, we need to, you know, team up. You know, they have like some slot, uh, you know. Side sexual references and Greg's like, oh, Mama Cita, I'm a manny man. You know, he thinks like I was hitting on her, it, you know, is hitting on him. Not so much Al, but you know. Then they exchange exchange pleasantries in their own languages. Uh, not really going anywhere because I guess the culture. Well, we know I was um Irish. Well, well, Irish, uh, English, whatever she is. Um, and then Dragon League is Spanish, you know, so, like, it's hard to, hard to tell, you know. Lucha Libre, Tormundo, Galavision, Excelente, de Bastilio, Sigosis, you know. Sorry, now East is gonna kill me. <laughs> put her, put her freaking spiked freaking heel in my face. I wouldn't mind. Just saying. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. So, a little bit of a culture difference between Lyra and, and uh, Dragon Lee. But I think they'll come to, you know, they'll, you know, they'll eventually work like a well-oiled machine. They're going to beat Mommy and Dom. Probably not. But we'll see Tuesday night on the program. So, I get the segment 2.5 out of 5 stars. Alright, then we see Tyler Bate. He's all ready for Joe Coffee after an incident at an NXT Live event this past, fr oh, last Friday. So we got that coming up. So I give that three out of five stars. And then we get a video of Ilya Dragunov. He's all ready for Trick Williams next week. And he says, Williams' fantasy will not become reality. So, yeah. So Drag uh, Ilya Dragunov is going to fucking murder Trick Williams. That's not going to be in a good way. That's it. So I give that as well three out of five stars. All right. So, um, then we see Vic Joseph plugging No Mercy with a dig, dig, diggity, diggity dog. I don't know what that was about. Okay. 
Anyway, so after that, we go to Joe Coffee and Tyler Bate. We have the rest of the of the of Gallus at ringside. Mark Coffee and Wolfgang. They're there. Uh, really, this match went nowhere. As uh, you know, it's a you know big beefy man slapping meat in that ring. Uh, got a German suplex for a near fall by uh Mark uh, by me, Joe Coffee. But then Tyler Bate knocks him to the outside. They get a big flippy dippity doo by Tyler Bate, former NXT UK champion, former Heritage Cup champion. You know, that was like for like five minutes. Uh, so he hits that. And then Jamo Kato returns out of nowhere, attacks Tyler Bate, causing the disqualification at four minutes exactly. So Tyler Bate is your winner by DQ. I, I didn't understand this whole. Fucking thing. Why is he attacking Tyler B? Random shit. But it is what it is. Alright, so I gave that match uh, two and a half out of five stars. And that's it. Alright, then we hear from Baron Snow and Corbin. He's ready for Von Wagner next week. He's uh, they're in the dreaded parking lot. Uh, and then Braun Breaker comes in. And he's like, I'm not done with Von Wagner just yet. So Corbin's like, hmm... Interesting. But I'm not... He's like, I'm not scared of you. Hmm. We'll see what happens with that situation. So I give that three out of five stars. Alright, then we go to Ben Frazier, Nathan Frazier, the Heritage Cup... Uh, the official Heritage Cup uh, champion. Uh, talks about his match at Heat Wave next week with Norm Dar to kind of unify the Heritage Cups. Uh... And then um, he's talking, you know, with his talk show, that uh, conspiracy theory talk show, whatever it is. And then Norm Dar, the rest of Metaphor, uh, hack his feed, and, and they try to turn turn his talk show into Supernova Sessions. So we have, you know, Oro Menza. Then we have the lovely ladies, Jaca the lovely Jakarta Jackson and Life's Legend. I mean, looking... Oh. I mean, I have my Asians, you know, Kyrie... Freaking! I have Kyrie, Asuka, and Io, and then I have you know the, the you know the the Puerto Rican Ricans, you know Mercedes Monet, you know Charlie 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 Caruso, you know. And then you know on the side of that, I gotta I gotta put freaking Jakarta Jackson and freaking Lash Legend in that category of freaking women I wanna, you know. God damn, they look good. I bet you they could suck a good, you know what, but I digress. Uh, in any case. But in any case, uh, so they hack the feed. Dart brags about how great of a champion he is, but he insists that his cup is actually real. And we see a clip of Dart admitting last week otherwise. So then, <laughs> and then Ben Frazier does his best Eli, Eli Drake impression, pulls out the fraud button. Like the dummy, yeah, dummy, yeah, button. And every time that, that freaking uh, Dar lies, it's fraud, fraud, fraud. I was like, that was, I thought that was hilarious. So Dar keeps talking and he keeps hit pressing the button. It's just hilarious. So we'll see what happens uh, this Tuesday night for the real Heritage Cup between Ben Frazier and Mr. Norm Dar. And we'll see what happens with that. It's probably going to be a banger. And we'll see what happens with that. And we move on. So I gave that 3.25 out of 5 stars. Alright, there we go to JC Jane and Dia Hale. Don't know how this match lasted 8 goddamn minutes. But, uh... But Dia Hale, you know, she she uh, she locked in the Kimura on JC. But she got to the ropes. And then a spring buster by the lovely JC Jane. Gets a near fall. And then Andre, Mr. Chase, gets on the apron... And I was like, oh, you better not freaking throw in the towel again. Uh, Thea avoids going into the turnbuckle, and it starts yelling at Mr. Chase, which allows JC Jane to grab a small package, fruit roll-up, circa 1922. One, two, three, JC Jane is your winner. And once again, Mr. Chase cost, you know, his student a match. And she still is not happy about it. Oh, man, this is going to be one hellacious situation. Like I said, I think Thea Hale is going to get to the point where it's like, she's going to drop out of uh, Chase U, and she's going to go her own way. 
Maybe, maybe there'll be a gimmick change. I don't know. Maybe she stays on as, you know, the resident weed girl, whatever. I don't know. But, in any case, she loses to J.C. Jane. And that's pretty much it. So I gave the match 2.5 out of 5 stars. And that's it. Alright, after that, we get another video of Humberto Calillo and Angel Garza, you know, Los Lotharios, as we saw last week, uh, them, you know, they broke up, and then they're like, oh, we should get back together for our grandfather, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, this time we see a, a new video narrated by their grandfather. How is that possible? He's dead. Or maybe he's not dead, I don't know. But anyway, he talks about the importance of family staying together. So we see clips of them wrestling together as children. And looks like uh, we're going to get a reuniting of Los Lotharios. I think it's needed because there's not that many tag teams in NXT. Just saying. Just saying. So we'll see what happens with that. So I give that two and a half out of five stars. Alright, then we see uh, Carmelo Hayes once again. He's still signing autographs and he finish it, finally finishes that up. I mean, how many fucking autographs was he signing? Like 10 million? What the fuck? Pays to be the champion, I guess. But anyway, he finishes uh, his uh, autograph signing. And then Wes Lee comes in with the contract. And he like, puts it in Melo's face. So he drops it on the table. And he's like, I'll see you next Tuesday. Uh, well, actually, Carmelo says, I'll see you next Tuesday. But then Wes Lee gets more mad, clears the table. And... The, no, the, the, the security guards come in because like they, they think something's going to happen. And Mel's like, Tranquilo. Take it easy. Take it easy. So, uh... So, so Wesley clears the table, says, I'll see you in the ring so we can make this official. Then he takes the table and he starts dragging it to the ring with him. That's something you don't see every day. Not like the Dudley Boys when they were in WWE back in the day. Every, like every, almost like every fucking hardcore match. Basically, tables matches or TLC matches, they brought out the table by themselves. And Bubba didn't even have to say, Demon! What? Get the table! They just brought the tables with them. Most of the time. But, so, Wesley takes, you know, it's like, well... We don't have a table, you know, set up in the ring, so we're going to do our own. I'm going to bring my own table. <laughs> give, give me this table. Brings it to the ring. I thought that was a little bit hilarious, but it is what it is. All right, so I give that three to five stars. All right, then we get a video about my girl, my sweetheart, Tiffany Stratton, the AEW, wi uh, AEW, whoa boy, the NXT Women's Champion. Daddy, why did you mess me up? Mess my intro up, Daddy. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby girl. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here's my, here's, here's my credit card. Thank you, Daddy. Bye! Oh, boy. Ah, oh, Tiffany's gonna kick my ass later. Shit! But in a good way. But anyway. Alright, so Tiffany's scratching Tiffy time next week at Heat Wave. Don't know what she's gonna do. Just look good. <laughs> but we move on. And that's that. Uh... Anyway, then we get the Heat Wave rundown before our final segment of the night. The impromptu contract signing between Wesley and Carmelo Hayes for the NXT World Title. So, he brings the table out, out with him brings and sets it up in the ring. Tells Carmelo to come out here. And he does. So, gets in the ring. Carmelo says that uh, Wesley is about to turn him into the old, ver into the old version of... Uh, so Wesley talks about all the things Carmelo gets to do these days, because he's a champ. So uh, Carmelo brings up uh, Wesley's time as North American champion. Uh, but then when a little pressure comes up, you fold like a chair on the Alabama boardwalk. Whoa. Ala. He went to Greensboro, Alabama. Look at that. Uh, Wesley is tired of being told I can't do something. But here he is after becoming a tag team champion and a North American champion. So you could say I can't, but I did. So Melo's not convinced. He's like, I'm not convinced. He's like, you gotta beat me to convince me. And he tells Wesley that you can't beat me. 
And Wesley's like, well, I've heard that all before, but I'm not going to fail again. So then he signs the contract, gives it to Carmelo, who tells him, it's like, like, you earned this, but then he warns him not to go chasing waterfalls. Ah, nice TLC reference, you know, big up to Lisa Left Eye Lopez, you great woman, you. Don't go chasing waterfalls. You know, great song, great, great song. And he says, next week, I won't miss. I mean, he probably won't. So then he signs the contract. So then Wesley jumps onto the table, breaking the table in half. That was pretty cool. And he says, I'll see you next week at Heat Wave. And that ends the show. So, kind of a weak little segment. I thought there was going to be a fight. It's usually during contract signs. We, you know, we see the table breaking. But somebody broke the table by themselves. So we get that. All right, so next week we got Wesley and Carmelo Hayes for the NXT uh, title. Should be a banger. We got Von Wagner and Baron Storm and Corbin. Big beefy men slapping meat in that match. We got another banger for the Heritage Cup between Norm Dar and Ben Frazier. Uh, and much more at Heat Wave 2023. So we'll see what happens next week on the program. And that's that. So I gave the final segment 3.25 out of 5 stars. NXT was a pretty decent show, and I gave it 6.5 out of 10 stars. Never know what you motherfuckers thought of the show down below in the comments section. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button to death. Hit that subscribe button on this channel and my other channels, which are down there in the gobbledygook description box. Uh, check out my first video of the day. Uh, talk about Cash Wheeler and his arrest, and then uh, his arraignment, and then he got... Uh, he posted Bond. He's a free man now. And the match between FTR and the Bucks is still on for All In next Sunday for the AEW Tag Team Titles. So check out the video my thoughts about that down below in the description box. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you're real, if you're not, please, for the love of God, get some help. Don't forget to share the video all over the internet. And most importantly, tap that bell, turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video. Because if you do, well, you're SOL. And I think we all know what that means. Ha ha ha. And that's pretty much it. Alright, everybody. Thanks for watching. I'm going to get ready for SmackDown. Hang out with the beautiful Puerto Rican princess herself, Issa. And I'm going to have fun on Friday night. Because it's Friday night. We must acknowledge our tribal chief. And it should be a good SmackDown tonight. Rampage should be decent, too. And then tomorrow night, we got Collision. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I will do my uh, Rampage and Ring of Honor review, hopefully tomorrow, before I, I do my errands uh, on my Saturday. Uh, and then Saturday night, Collision. So I'm going to try to do a triple threat, another triple threat, tomorrow with Rampage and Ring of Honor over on the Killer Demons channel. And as well as Collision. So lots of videos coming your way on the Killer Demons channel. Uh, tonight with SmackDown, tomorrow with Ring of Honor, Rampage, and Collision. And that'll be it for your weekend. And that's pretty much it for that. Alright, so once again, 6.5 out of 10 stars for NXT this past Tuesday. And that's it. Leave me your thoughts and opinions down below. And that's it. Continue to subscribe. Continue to show your love and support. That's it. Alright, thanks for watching everybody. I'm Peter Joseph signing off for video number two, and I'll see you guys later on the Kill Demons channel for SmackDown. But until then, rock on and rock hard with your cocoot! And if you're not down with that, it's too goddamn bad, man. Because if you're not down with that, me, the Purge, and everybody else, you don't like us, well, too fucking bad, because we got three words for you. Fuck you, man! That's it. Thanks for watching. And until next time, and there will be a next time. Until next time, my friends. Peter Gomez signing off. Peter Joseph signing off. Botch. I'll stop botching. I'll shut up now. But until next time, peace. Bye.